starts with the word Arba. It is, uh, let's say, about 10 lines from the bottom of the page. We had a discussion in the Mishnah. If a chatzar, a courtyard, or a house, not one wall broke down, but two walls broke down. And it happened on Shabbos. So Rabbi Huda says, the first opinion says that it's mutter. It's mutter for Shabbos, it's mutter uh, continues to be. Uh, it, it's mutter for that Shabbos, but the next Shabbos it's also. He holds that Shabbos came in, it was still mutter, even though it's a, this is a din in the walls, but Rabbi Huda is, is, uh, is lenient. Rabbi Yaisi says that if it's mutter for that Shabbos, it should be mutter for a, an, another Shabbos. If it's not mutter for another Shabbos, it shouldn't be mutter for that Shabbos. We had a discussion, what's going on over here with the two walls that broke down? How big was the breach in the wall? So we have a machlekes Rav and Shmuel. Rav said that the breach was under 10 amas. Under 10 amas should be a doorway. According to Rav, why is there a problem if there's two doors? Rav explained that we're dealing with, it's on a corner. Karen Zavis, there's no doors on a corner. So it's not considered a doorway. I, according to Rav, it should be that the lip of, this, of the roof should continue downward. He said that it was going on a slant and you don't say when it's on a slant. Shmuel learned differently. Shmuel learned the Mishnah that it's talking about that it's lo- it's the breach in the wall is larger than ten amas. The breach in the wall is larger than ten amas. If the breach in the wall is larger than ten amas, why does it have to be two walls? Even if it's one wall, it should be a problem. It's not considered a door. Shmuel said, "You're right. One wall would one wall would talk to be a problem by a chater." So why does it say two walls? So Shmuel says that's referring to the house. In the house, it needs to be two walls. One second, why in a house does it need to be two walls? In a house also, one wall would be a problem. So Shmuel says, no, So we had questions on that. Shmuel really says, he doesn't say that. And also, uh, why, why doesn't he say, if, why doesn't he say, it means the lip of the ceiling continues down. Why doesn't he say that by the two walls? So he says that the way it broke was that the wall broke together with, it's on a corner, the wall broke together with the other wall and it zigzagged its way through. And so therefore Shmuel holds that this two walls broken down is really four walls that needs to be completed. And Shmuel holds that you don't say on four walls. Usually when you say four walls, you mean all four walls. Over here, this house has more like eight walls because of the way it zigzags. So, but whatever the case is, Shmuel doesn't say Peter Gerber to say something by four walls. Okay. So the Gemara now says, Shmuel Rav. Why doesn't Shmuel say like Rav that it's talking about that it's under ten Tvachim and then why don't we say Peter Gerber to say something? Uh, it's on a corner, so it's not a doorway. Why don't I say particularly say something that the edge of it will continue down? It says it's on a slant. So he says, Allah like Tani, the Mishnah didn't give me that detail. According to Rav, you have to make up a detail here in order for the Mishnah to work. Shmuel doesn't want to do that. I don't know why Shmuel's satisfied with making up a detail about the, the way it zigzagged through. But anyway, maybe that the Mishnah doesn't need to explain. He holds this, the Mishnah should have explained. Rav why doesn't Rav say like Shmuel, talking about that it's larger than 10, uh, than 10 Amis, Imkain, Habaleach Sajra, it's not going to work. It's Rav holds that it would be like a gazebo, a portico. For Rav Lechsadra, then it would never be a problem. Rav holds that whenever I have a roof, it would always be mutter because the, the, the lip of the roof always travels down, right? So Rav holds, so it can't be according to Shmuel, it can't be like Shmuel says, that it just zigzagged, um, the, 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 the breach in the wall together with the roof zigzagged across it, which makes four walls, because Rav holds four walls as mother also. 
to say Pitik Riyad Vesesim at four walls. The Itmar, as it was stated by Amiran. We quote this, this statement that we had several times. It's about a gazebo. Are you allowed to carry in a gazebo that um, doesn't have any walls? You're just under there, you know, whatever. It's There's no walls. It's in a valley. Bika is really like an open area. It's coming to tell me it's not near a house. Rava, Mamatal Taltal Bakul Rav says you're allowed to carry under the gazebo. Why? Because the lip of the ceiling goes down. Shmuel Shmuel says he can't carry in under the gazebo because there's no walls. I know there's a roof, but there's no walls. And there's only four poles in the corner. Yeah. So Shmuel says you can only carry under that for in, in the area of four amas. So... Rav says that the lip of the roof goes down and closes it off. Why? We don't say that the lip of the roof closes it off. Okay, that's an elaboration on the discussion that we had. However, now the Gemara goes to explain what was the case of this achsadra, of this gazebo. What, what was going, what's going on? How distant are the poles one from another? Could be that that's just considered a doorway. It says like this, Be'eser, if it's within 10 amas, you know, we, we, we always say that a door could be up to 10 amas. Then, if this achsadra has poles, and within the poles, it's ten am. It's there's only there's up to ten amas. So then everyone agrees that you can carry under it, big chiddush, even according to Shmuel. Why? It's considered a doorway. Then we're going to see also that it has to do with pitik or yard vesayim. There's a little confusion here. I'm not clear on it. If Shmuel is also agreeing to pitik or yard vesayim when it's under ten amas, or if it's just because of a doorway, Rashi over here. Says, oh, it's a door. The Balavsti must be tikkun amit psachimim. Says, I don't need to say pitikr that it's the roof coming down, it's just the door. But later on, it's not going to fit perfectly like that. But anyway, keep ligi biyasir miyasir. Where is the machlekas when it's larger than 10 amas? In other words, the, the four poles in the corner are, are more uh, distant from each other, more than 10 amas. So now it's Machlekes Rav and Shmuel. Rav says you can carry under it, and Shmuel says you can't. But if it's less than 10 amas, everyone agrees you can carry under it. V'yikadamri, however, there is another version of this. There are those that say, V'yeser kuliyama leipligi, if it's larger than 10 amas, then everyone holds it to aser. No one says piti kuyerd v'sesim. Even Rav, that's a lenient. It's too, it's too large. Keep ligi v'yeser. The whole Machlekes is only... If it's within, if it's uh, um, within ten amas, uh, from post to post. Where now says Vahadam, yeah. Is this argument or discussion about whether or not it became a Rishu Sayakid, this space yeah. under the gazebo or the culprit? Right. Right. Naftali is saying it's it's um, talking about if the space under the Achsaj is becoming a Rishu Sayakid due to the due to the lip. That's what's going on. Right. So that's really what this kind of discussion right. in that situation. Yeah, the only thing is with those things by the parks, usually they're on a slant. Right. And that uh, which which would not do PTQ well, to no, say so. The thing is if they have a ledge at the end, then it's probably fine. Uh-huh. Right? Uh -huh. But it doesn't need walls because the whole all the all the area that we know is what it's two poles and a wire, right? So you should understand that it doesn't need a wall. You have two beams and a beam running across. That should be fine. Uh -huh. Now here we're saying, uh, you're asking a very good question. You're asking a good question. I, I don't have clarity on this. Yeah. Um, Avinasan's asking that whenever I have a gazebo that I have posts, I always have a tzuras pesach, even if I don't say pitikir advisaisim. I have the two posts. With a string across, it's no worse. I, the roof is no worse than the string. So why are we saying that there's an issue? 
Why are we saying it's Machlech the Shrav and Shmuel? If Pitikra, I don't need Pitikra. I have a door frame, which is basically how all our Erevin are. Uh, uh, I believe the Chazanish answers that we're talking about um, where the roof is, is protruding over right. the posts and then I lose my door frame because the posts are within you know, I, the only way that I can get a full enclosure here is if I use the, the, the lip of the roof to come down because the posts don't have a um, it's not going to be considered a door frame if the posts are not at the edge of the where the beam is going across, okay, well, I don't know. <laughs> right, I hear. I hear. Okay, the issue, the question is there. Okay, it's uh, now v'hadam Rav Yehuda. This is Rav Yehuda says Rav Yehuda is a uh, second generation of Meir and Bavel. He says Kaira Dalid Mater Bechorva. I have uh, a ruined. I just went on top of Tzadike. If I have a, a, a house that's that's collapsed, but I have a beam that's four tefachim that's going across part of the house, maybe the front, and it's being held up by some sort of something is holding it up over there. The question is, can you carry directly under that beam? So, in another case, Rav Nachman Amar Rabba Bar Vokeru Dalad Mater B'Mayim. We were talking about, we had this with a well that's in between two properties that um, if you're going to take from the water, then you're going to be taking from the other person's side because the water moves around. Unless I put a mechitza there, what's considered a mechitza? So we said if you put a beam across that four by four, four tvachim, and the beam across, it's considered like the edge of it, that what's underneath it is considered divided. So it's a heter by water. So who's this going to fit with? that holds that just a beam across that would be a tefach thick would be considered like it's coming down as the wall. Mani, lahach lishna da amrit be esra leitligi. We had two versions before. A lishna kam and a lishna basra. The first version said that the machlikas rav and shmuel is when it's uh, more than 10. But if it's under 10, everyone agrees. So who's gonna, who's, who would this Rav Yehuda statement in Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Baravua, Rav Nachman said, who would it fit with everyone? Why? It's talking about that it's under 10, and everyone agrees that it works. There's no machlekes there. They're very good. Rav Yehuda and Rav Nachman and, and the name of Rav Baravu are saying their halacha according to Ravi and Shmuel. It fits well. And Rav Yehuda is a Talmud of Rav and Shmuel. And Rav Nachman, I believe, is a Talmud of Shmuel. I'm not sure where Rabbi Baravua was, but either way, it fits. This fits nicely because it will fit with both opinions. Uh, but according to the opinion that's more strict, the the second version of this, it says that the machlekes Rav and Shmuel is with is if the posts that are holding up the roof of the gazebo are within ten amas, and Oh, that's where Shmuel says it doesn't work. But if it's larger than for sure, then even Rav says it doesn't work. So who is this going to be according to when Rav Yehuda says that it does work, a beam across, that it goes down? It can only fit with Rav and it can only fit on the Tanam. It has to, uh, can only go with Rav. To Rav. It's only fitting with Rav. Okay. Now the Gemara says, Lema Abayah Barav Aplikta the Rav Shmuel Kamiflugi. We do this sometimes. They say that uh, a later generation that has a machlekes aligns perfectly with an earlier generation machlekes. So Rav and Shmuel is going to fit uh, uh, is going to fit with a uh, Abaya and Rava is going to fit with the earlier generation Rav and Shmuel. What what is Abaya and Rava talking about? We know what Rav and Shmuel are talking about. They're talking about if the if the roof continues downward to create uh, fictitious walls. So the Itmar, as it was stated, it's a Gemara Sukkah. There's different ways of interpreting what the Petzimen are. But um, Rashi over here learns, apparently, that there's 
an achsadra, like a gazebo that has posts on the side. But within the posts, there's uh, along the walls, there are pitsimen or thin um, sticks that are that are going up, but there's uh, less than three tvachim within them. Sounds like a good sukkah. It's kosher. Ain la psimen. Let's say there are no posts in, in between the, the four poles on the side. Then it's a machlek as Abaya and Rava. Abaya amr kshera, v'rava amr psula. Abaya says it's kosher, Rava says it's possible. Sounds exactly like the machlek regarding Shabbos. It's a sukkah without walls. It's like a gazebo on Shabbos. Can you carry under it or not? Rav said yes, Shmuel said no. Abaya says it's a good sukkah. And, and uh, Rav says it's not a good sukkah. It fits perfectly that Abaya would hold like Rav, that it's a good sukkah. Rav holds that it's good on Shabbos. You can carry there. Shmuel says it's, uh, uh, you can't carry on Shabbos under there. Rav says that it's, that, it's, um, that it's not a good sukkah. It would have been easier for me to remember this if Rav went like Rav, because Rav and Rav is like an extension. It's the same with the first two letters, but it doesn't. <laughs> They don't always work it out like for, for convenience. So, okay. Um, why is it kosher? He says, I'm our Pitekir Rav's opinion that the walls, that the uh, roof continues downward to create walls. Rav, I'm so the Layamar Pitekir Vesaisen. Layma Abaya Kirav, Rav Kishmol. Let's say that Abaya holds like Rav and Rav holds like Shmuel. Where it says, Ali the Shmuel Kuliamale Pligi. You see, turns out everyone agrees that if Shmuel would come and appear and try and enter into the discussion of Abaya and Rava regarding a sukkah, everyone would say that Shmuel would agree with Rava that it's puzzle. No one, and even Abaya won't be able to say Shmuel holds like me that it's kosher. Shmuel holds that it's puzzle. He plegali with the Rav. According to Rav, that Rav would say it's kosher. So Abaya Karav. Abaya says that it's a, a kosher sukkah, like Rav says, that it's considered walls for Shabbos. It works. The roof continues downward. But Rav, what does Rav say? Rav says that it's not a good sukkah. How can he hold like Rav that it's good for Shabbos? The walls are the roof. The posts that go along, the, 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 the beams that go across around the posts are made for the achsadra. So therefore, I'll say that they continue downward. There's, I don't need any kavana in that. They happen to be that there's posts here, there's a gazebo, there's a roof on top. I'll say that that's, a, uh, that that's considered walls that come down. Aval hacha dahani mechitzes lav l'sakavi diloi. But for sukkah, you didn't put anything. You didn't put the schach up or the posts up for the for the sukkah. It wasn't put up for the sukkah. It's not made for a wall of a sukkah. For the wall of a sukkah or for the roof of a sukkah, I need to have more kavana. There's a little bit of an issue here because you don't need to put up mechitzas l'shma. The walls of a sukkah don't need to be built the same sukkah. Of the extension of the roof is considered the edge of yeah. the walls. Yeah, that's what we're discussing. Also, we're discussing the if the edge of the roof, is. because it has its own thickness, could we say that it continues downward halachically right. to extend downward to create walls? And if there's ever a floor or a platform, does that also include? Does that give any to to go upward? Yeah. Yeah. So by a platform, it's easier. By a platform, we pack a say that it goes upward. We can say um, it's called good asik. If you're standing on a platform, we can say that the walls of the platform can continue. On. It's called the almud, not a, uh, if you're on a pillar. It's more prevalent by a platform, but not as much by a roof. But here we're just talking about the walls that we're, we're not extending out to the roof. We just want to know about where up and for where the poles are. Less than 10 of us. We're discussing here if the beams of the roof 
can continue downward fictitiously to create walls for a sukkah. And if not, then it would. And if it's not. Where the poles are. Oh, because uh, uh, you're saying because of that chaznesh that says the. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know about that. Uh -huh. So we come out. Of, we come out over here with a very uh, interesting halacha that, and the, what the halacha is, come up with this thought that a sukkah, it's not going to work even according to Rav because it wasn't done lishma. Even though I don't need lishma for, to put up walls, I don't even need lishma really for the schach. <laughs> put up schach for shade, but. Um, for some reason, it's not going to work. That Rav is going to hold that it's not going to work for a sukkah. It's not clear why all of a sudden. Rashi points this out. He says, Afagav deloi boi mechitzel tashman, kulei hai mi alei makilinan. But nevertheless, we're not going to be that lenient. All right. This, uh, the Ritva has a, a very basic question on this. We said that everyone holds that Shmuel is going to say that it doesn't, it's not a kosher sukkah. Shmuel holds it's not good for Shabbos because they don't say P. Tikri or It's not going to be a kosher sukkah. Everyone says that, right? Shmuel's going to say it's not a kosher sukkah. The problem is that if you look at the Gemara before, Shmuel says that I say P. Tikri or on anything that's not three, that's not more than four walls. That's not four, four walls. But if it's less than four walls, then I couldn't say Pitik Yerd Vesayim. So how many walls do I need for a sukkah? Only three. So Shmuel really should should say Pitik Yerd Vesayim on the three walls. That's the Ritva's question. Okay. Rabbi Yisti Yomer Imut. This answer, but the question is better. Rabbi Yisti Yomer Imutaren. Rabbi Yisti says that if it's permissible for this Shabbos, it should be permissible for next Shabbos. We're talking about when the walls collapse. He says if it's also for next Shabbos, it should be also for this Shabbos. When it says, they have a question. Rabbi Yaisi wasn't clear. Is he saying that it should be us this Shabbos because it's us next Shabbos? Or is he saying it should be Mutter next Shabbos because it's Mutter this Shabbos? Which way is he going? So I'm Rav Shesh's Lister. He's going Lister. And that since for next Shabbos it doesn't work, for this Shabbos it also doesn't work. Tani Nami Hachi was also taught in a Bryce from Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi says, just like. In the future, next Shabbos, you don't have enough walls here. So, also for this Shabbos, it already doesn't work. That's what Dr. Stein, we said, um, if the Mechitza falls down on Shabbos, it's a problem. Itmar, Rebchia, this is supposed to be adjusted, it's adjusted by the Bach, to Rebchia Barashi Amarav. Rebchia Barashi says in the name of Rav that Halacha k'rabbi yaisi. The halacha is like k'rabbi yaisi. Strict opinion. Shmuel am halacha k'rabbi yudah. Shmuel is lenient. Shmuel says the halacha goes like k'rabbi yudah. The first opinion that even if the mechitzas fall down on, uh, on Shabbos, it's still kosher. And we are Shmuel hachi. Shmuel says the halacha is like k'rabbi yudah v'atanan, but one second. We said before, we had a mission. Amar rabbi yudah. This was a discussion about if you can make an Erev for someone without his consent, um, if you can be zachin, you can't be zachin la adam. You can't acquire an air for him by air of tchumen. Why? By air of tchumen, if you say that his residence is two thousand amos outside the city on this side, then he loses his ability to walk on the other side. So it's not a zchus for him. It's not a merit for him. It's to his uh, detriment. It's chavim. And we can't do that without his consent. When it comes to Eruvi Chatseris, then what's the problem? You should be allowed to. You can make an Erev for your neighbors, even without their consent, because what do they have to lose? All that's going to happen is that they can carry in the area, which is no problem. Now that we've learned another halacha, this becomes a little bit of a question. Because we learned that according to one opinion, if you make an Erev, then in one, one, in one aspect, things get worse. Because then I can't carry to other courtyards because I have clay bi bias in my courtyard. 
So when we learned when we went when we learned this originally, we didn't get into that halacha. But now that we know this, there's a, a, a new question that pops up. Okay. Whatever the case is, Rav Rav Yehuda says the name of Shmuel that the halacha is like Rav Yehuda. What does Rav Yehuda say? That Zach and Ladam Shalag Bifanav, you can make an Erev Tchumim. Vlo Yaid, Ela Kalma Kam Shashan Rabbi the Beirev in Allah Kamaisa. And not only that, not only that, but the halacha is always like Rabbi Huda in, in Erev. Vlo Amalei Rav Chanan Baghdasa, the Rabbi Yehuda. Don't be confused over here when he's talking to Rabbi Yehuda. He's not talking to the Rabbi Yehuda that we were just talking about. This is Rav Yehuda, this is Rav Yehuda by Yechesko, student of Shmuel. Rav Chana Bagdasa says to Rav Yehuda, Omar Shmuel, Afila B'mavish Natal Krasi Lechad. Does Shmuel say that Allah is like Rav Yehuda, Rabbi Lai? Even in the case of our Mishnah, uh, that a Mavoy, that the beam fell down, or the Lechi fell down on Shabbos, where Rav Yehuda says it's Mutter, does, Rabbi, does Shmuel say that Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda in our Mishnah as well? We're getting to a real problem now because Shmuel said the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda. And we have a statement clearly that this question was asked, is the halacha like Rabbi, like Rabbi Yehuda in our Mishnah? And on Malay, Shmuel responded, We only pass can like him, like Rabbi Yehuda, by Erevin. What's Erevin? Erevin means the joining together of a, of a courtyard with the food, but not by the walls, which means over here a wall collapsed. We don't pass in the Rabbi Yehuda. The lechi fell down, the kaira fell down. We don't pass in the Rabbi Yehuda. Shmuel clearly said this. So what are we saying? That the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda. We have a clear conversation with Shmuel that he says Allah is not like Rabbi Yehuda in our Mishnah. Depends where the walls fell down to. If the walls fell down, that are interrupt, that are the walls, the barriers, the partitions between a private area and a Rishasarabim, then we don't pass them like, like, like Rabbi Yehuda, because then he may end up carrying out to the Rishasarabim. But if, if it fell down from here to a Carmelis, then we say that we go like Rabbi Yehuda, we are more lenient. Yeah. In yesterday's Rambam, uh, uh, yesterday's Rambam, there was one halacha. I don't know if you remember if it was the same one, but it came out the Chumra if it's a Carmelis. If it's open to a Carmelis, then there was a Chumra that we said it's like Neya. It's the opposite svar of this. Here, this is a logical svar. If the wall falls down between a Carmelis and a Shisarabim, we're more strict. If it falls down between a, 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 a Rishasayachid, which is without a wall, um, is a Carmelis, and it falls down between a, an actual Carmelis, so then we're more lenient. It's both a Carmelis, it's not a problem. Um, so this is logical, but over there the, in, in the Rambam, there was a, a Svara that went that if I throw I forget what the Allah was. But it made it look like it becomes more strict when it's open to a Carmelis because it's Chayzer Vinaya. It like reawakens the, 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 the area next to it, awakens the first area and creates a problem. I don't know. Okay. We have a Mishnah. Someone builds a house. Uh, he builds a, an attic, a second floor on top of two houses. So uh, the way this would be is that there's houses that are um, possibly across the street, across the street from each other. And he builds this attic, that the second floor that covers over the street. And we're going to discuss, can you carry underneath that, that second floor? And the same is with bridges. Bridges are attached on both ends, but underneath it, you can always walk, usually. So, so um, it has two walls. You can carry under it on Shabbos. say, no, you can't. It's two walls. And as Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi Yehuda also says, 
Rabbi Yehuda says that you can make an Erev in a, to, with a Mavi Mafulish. Mavi Mafulish, we always spoke about a Mavi, but that was usually a Mavi Sasim. It's closed on one end. It's a cul-de-sac. It's a dead end. Um, so you can put a, a post or a, or, a, um, or a beam across at the front, at the entrance. Mavi Mafulish is it's open on both ends. Rabbi Yehuda says, oh, Mavi Mafulish, the Maisa has two walls. Two walls for Rabbi Yehuda are enough. Now, the Gemara is going to discuss, is that the logic of Rabbi Yehuda for the entire Mishnah or just for the end of the Mishnah? It goes like this. Amar Rabba. Rabba says, <clears throat> Don't say that the reason for Rabbi Yehuda in our Mishnah is because two walls are enough from Minatayra. Two walls is considered enclosed. Not because of the two walls. The beginning of the Mishnah that says, if someone builds a, an attic on top of two houses and he's able to walk in between the two houses underneath that second story, it's not because to, the two walls of the houses are enough. It's because P. Tikriyard Vesaisim, it's because the, the lip of the attic, of the floor of the attic, continues downward to create a partition. And it's considered like you have four walls. It's not a din in two walls. That's what he's saying. Abaya has a question to Rabba. Rabba was a bias teacher. Rabba was a bias teacher. Abaya asks his teacher a question. Yes, Joachim, I'm Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says more than this. More than this was a discussion in that uh, Mishnah over there. A uh, window that's between two houses or uh, bridges. Um, Rabbi Yehuda says now, that if someone owns two houses, someone has two houses on two sides of, it, of the street. Unbelievable. You just put a beam across the street and you can carry within the area of your two houses, carry from one house to another across the street just because of the beam that went across or because of a post that's on both sides. You can carry in the middle. Amrullah, the sages said to him, you can't um, make an Erev, you can't join a Rosh with just a, uh, a, a post. There's a street that's going straight through. Now, what we're seeing here is clearly that Rabbi Yehuda holds that two walls is considered closed off. It's considered a full partition, Midai Raisa. Otherwise, it's impossible to say that Rabbi Yehuda would accept a street going through and um, and Pete, why don't we say Pete Ticker Yard Vesaisim? Maybe it's a dim in Pete Ticker. You can only make an air of the Sister Rabbi. According to Rabbi Huda, you can. That's what the sages are arguing. Well, I, think, I, think, I mean, I think they are just Rabbi in the right side. Uh huh. Okay. That's a. Uh, you can't make an air of the Sister Rabbi, I think, unless you have door, doors that close. That was a discussion we had. Um, now, what we're saying is, is that here we have a case where there is no roof. I don't have a P ticker yard association. I just have two houses on two sides and I'm just putting a beam across. There's no roof. The only way that that could be mutter is because I hold two walls as an hour. So what are you telling me that it's because of P ticker and Rabbi Huda doesn't hold that two walls are enough. Rabbi Huda holds two, two, walls, uh, two walls are clearly enough. Even in a case where I don't have P ticker that the roof extends downwards still holds that it's permissible. Amalei he in, you're right. Rabbi says from there, you take a have a raya, that he holds that. I'm talking about mehal, like a mishmine, but from here you have no raya. Maybe over here it is a din in uh, two walls, but maybe not. Maybe over here it's a din in pitikra. I have the roof is ca- coming down and closing it off. So it's good enough. It's not because of the two walls. I'm Ravashi. Ravashi says, masnisen nami deka, dayakta. Our mission is also precise with one of the ways <laughs> that we just learned. It's the problem over here. It's Dupshatim and Rashi. It's, it's, um, let's take one of them. Rashi's first part. Our mission is also precise that it needs to be two walls. That it's the two, it's the din in two walls that's enough. Why? Look at what it says right afterwards. It says, And also, Rabbi Yehuda holds. That you can make an Erev with a, a Mavoy, an alley that's open on both ends. 
Over there, you don't have a roof. There, you have two walls. See, it's clearly that the whole Mishnah is a din in, in the two walls is considered a mechitza. If you say, that he holds particular yard versus him. I have to read this according to the first shot. Not sure there must be a different gear set to learn this. Okay, if you say that it's because of Peter Kuyard Vasaisim, then Vaid is telling me something new. I have to go the other way to fit this gear set. It goes like this Masnisa Nami Dayaka. Our Mishnah is also precise that the beginning of the Mishnah is like Rabba, that it's because of Peter Kuyard Vasaisim. So if we say that the beginning is Peter Kuyard Vasaisim, then now he says Vaid, and he tells me another halacha that I have two machitzas. But if I say that the beginning of the mission is because two machitzas is enough, my va'id, what are you telling me va'id? Also, he says it's the same, exactly the same thing, that two machitzas are enough. So Shema Mina, it must be that it's because of what Rabbi said, that it's because of Pitek Yer Vesetim, that the roof continues downward. The other gear so says the opposite, Svara. It says that it must be because of, uh, because of, Two mechitzas. Because when you say va'id, you have to be continuing what you're talking about. You're just telling me something brand new. Va'id is in also a, has to be a continuation, which is exactly the opposite of what I Okay. Hadron Allah Kogagis. Um we start a new parak. This is the tenth parak. Yeah, this is the last parak. This is, um, yeah, it, it's a sort of side discussions, <laughs> side discussions of Erevin. I might see tefillin, someone that finds tefillin <coughs> on Shabbos, he finds them in a place where they're not protected. So how does he get them to, a, in a field or whatever, how does he get them to where he wants them to, to be? So he can wear one pair at a time. And he wears it to wherever it is, and uh, and zug zug is a pair, is a pair by, pair by pair. He puts on one pair, then he goes out and he gets the next pair, and then he goes back and he brings them to a place that's protected. From Gamliel Amishnaim Shnaim, Gamliel says he can put on two pairs at a time. When do you say this? Rabbi, this doesn't make sense. I mean, uh, they're talking about Shabbos. He can't put on the tefillin. I mean, otherwise, there's no problem. He could just carry it. So. Right. That's because you know the it's on Shabbos, and usually we don't wear tefillin on Shabbos, right? Um, but yeah, that 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 uh, assumption that you have is because of the end of the Gemara that's going to discuss this. First, we don't we don't even know. Um, are you supposed to wear film on Shabbos or not? We, that's it itself is, is a discussion. So, w- w- yeah, the, w- w- wait a little bit. <laughs> patience, patience. Uh, okay, but when do we say that this is um, the way to do it? That's only the Yishanis. We're talking about that it has a knot on the tefillin, and you can tell that it's tefillin, that a kosher tefillin. Avil bechadashas, but if the new tefillin, which new tefillin, doesn't mean mamish new film. It means that maybe it's an amulet that's not actually filling. Then we don't give this leniency that you can just wear it in just because it's something that uh, that's an amulet. It's only because of the kedusha of film. So it needs to be that it's recognizable that it's mamish tefillin. Avul b'chadashes potter. He doesn't need to bring them in. Okay, that's the potter. If he finds them that they're wrapped up, a bunch of knots, a whole bundle, or if they're wrapped up some other way. So then then you can't wear them in. What you do is you have to wait over there till after Shabbos to protect them, and then you bring them in. You turn the page, but if it's a time of Sakana where you can't wait. So then you just cover them over to try to protect them, and you go. I have another solution. 
you pass it within four amas to your friend and your friend, your friend passes it to another friend and to another friend and you make this human chain, everything within four amas and you get it there. And the same is with the child. I won't believe what this case is. Talking about a woman that gave birth in a field on Shabbos and you have to get the baby in. It's like the... the um, in China, they were picking rice, they would, like give birth, they would squat and give birth and then continue picking rice for the rest of the day. <laughs> so anyway, there's the, the new baby that put the baby on the shoulder. But on Shabbos, what do you do? So um, you can't carry the baby outside. So you would um, pass, the, pass the baby to one person, to another person, to another person, until you get it into, into a, a, to the house. Rabbi Yehuda Aimer, Rabbi Yehuda says, doesn't have to be such an extreme case. Rabbi Yehuda says it could be just a regular barrel. You can just pass it from one to another. Oh, sorry. Rabbi Yehuda was talking about a, a different case. Rabbi Yehuda was talking about a different case. He adds that even if you want to get something outside the Tchum, or you want to get it from outside the Tchum in, you can pass it from one person to another, less than four amas. The sages said that, no, you can't, because that item is limited, just like the owner is, just like the owner can't walk more than 2,000 amas. The item has the same residence that the owner has, and you can't just pass it around. It, 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 it itself is not allowed to move. Okay, that's what they said. Um, let's begin with, the, let's the, begin the Gemara. Zug Echadin. Tanakama said that you can wear one pair of tefillin and tefillin, but not more than that. Lema Tanan Stam like Rab Meir. Sounds like the Mishnah is not like Rab Meir. It has a, we have a Stam Mishnah here. Might see tefillin, machlis and zug zug. It's not really a Stam. It's a machlikas right after it. But it's the, this, um, this author is said without a name. This must, this author, this anonymous opinion of the Mishnah is not Reb Meir's opinion. And usually Rabbi Yudar Nasi puts the anonymous opinion to be Reb Meir. So we're asking, Lema Stamad like Reb Meir? It looks like the Stam is not like Reb Meir. Dika Reb Meir, because if it would be Reb Meir's opinion, what would Reb Meir say? It was taught in a, in a Mishnah. It goes like this, if there's a fire on Shabbos, so there's a concern that if we allow you to save everything from the fire, then you may end up putting out the fire. So we say you're only allowed to save what's necessary for Shabbos. Where are you saving it to? You're taking it into a chatzah that doesn't have an Erev or whatever. So what do you do? So it says like this. Well, regarding food, it says clearly you take enough for three meals uh, for you and all the people in the house and the animals. But what about the clothing? So the mayor says, Levish komashiach, a little bit komashiach you put on all, as much clothing as you can wear. I used to joke about this with the people that didn't want to pay for luggage or something. They, they put on all the clothing that they could wear. They, uh, and um, they walk outside, they take it off and they turn on. What does it say in the Mishnah? To that courtyard that you're taking everything to. It says, if you can take clay tashmisha, the items that you need for eating, I don't know, plates, forks, whatever. Um, and then your clothing, you put on however much you can wear and however much you can wrap yourself. And then, and you go out. The Gemara says, But you're quoting Reb Meir that says you can put on however much you want, but it doesn't say Reb Meir. How do you know that's Reb Meir's opinion? It says, well, because I have a brisa on that Mishnah that says, that I um, have a brisa that says that Reb Meir says that same opinion, that says that you can put on however much you want, and then you can go back in and go and then uh, take it off and go back in and take it off and go back in and get more. But in, in, in that context, it says that you can put on however much you want, which is Reb Meir's opinion. So the problem now is that according to Reb Meir, I should be allowed to put on however many tefillin I want however many film I found. Why are you saying that it's only one? And it sounds like it's not Rameir's opinion. Amar Rava, Filotema Rab Meir. 
Rava says it could be Reb Meir's opinion. So why over there could you wear as many jackets and belts and, and this and, uh, and now you can only wear one pair of tefillin? Over there, they said you you dress as you dress in the weekday. Over here, they say also you dress like in the weekday. Over there, the fact is I can wear however many I want. I can put on three sweaters. I can put on uh, two pairs of pants. I mean, usually I don't, but I, can, I technically I can. Um, so therefore, when it comes to saving, we say technically you can, that's what you can do. So you can also rescue this from the fire in such a manner. So in the weekday, you only put on one. Why can I only wear one? We'll have to see. The normal way to do it. No, we're saying more than the normal. I think it's saying that you're only allowed to. You're only allowed one. We're going to see soon. Um, what's the pshat? So, we're going to come to saving that you can only do what you would do in the weekday, what you can do in the weekday, which is one. Yeah, unless it says clearly, I believe that's the pshat. Let's take a look at the next Gemara and maybe come clear. Rabbi Gamliel says that you can put on two pairs. What's the difference, two pairs? My kasavar, what does Rabbi Gamliel hold? I kasavar, Shabbos, man, tefillin, who? You see this, Dr. Stein? If he holds Shabbos, is a time for wearing tefillin. Some say that Shabbos is man, tefillin. Where do we get the opinion that Shabbos is not a time for wearing tefillin? We'll see. But... Um, but if he holds that Shabbos is a time for tefillin, so zug echadin tefillai, then you should only be allowed to wear one pair. You're wearing tefillin for the mitzvah. Can I put on more than one pair? Why not? Uh, so we'll, that we'll see. <laughs> that we'll see. There's a problem of wearing more than one pair of tefillin. Um, It's an issue of Baltasif. Um, I think they have to understand the Mishnah that you're challenged with two possible. So if you look at Taisvis, yeah. look at Taisvis, Ika Savar in the middle yeah. of the Taisvis says, Eli Yeshleimar, these man fill no Ika Baltasif. That's the two. Yeah. But even, even one, that's the question of the Mishnah then. Oh, so then one, if one, you should be allowed to wear. Yeah, Shabbos is man fill right? If Shabbos is not a time for tefillin, so why are we letting you wear? If they're being lenient and they're telling you that Shabbos is not a time for tefillin, but tefillin is also a, a garment. It's also a, an, a, a, a piece of jewelry that you someone wears tefillin. It makes him like he wears a hat, he wears tefillin. Puts on a talus. You're allowed to wear a talus outside um, on Shabbos, right? So, and so we're, we're telling you that you're allowed to put it on just as a tachshit, as like a piece of jewelry. So you can put on more than one if it's not a, if it's not a mitzvah. The Gemara says, Loilam kasava Shabbos loves man tefillin. Really, it's not a mitzvah on Shabbos to wear tefillin. V'chisha Rabbanan l'ni natzal ederech malbash b'makam tefillin. When did the sages say that you're allowed to wear it only only in a way that you would that you wear it filling? If you're going to wear more than one pair, then it's not going to be in the place of filling. No, you can wear two pairs. This is Ram Gamliel. Ram Gamliel says you can wear two two pairs of filling because that could fit. The Gemara says hachi nami in so why are you allowed to wear two? It should only be one. There's enough space on the head for two tefillin. That's the Pshan Ram Gamliel right now. According to Rav Shmuel why are you allowed to wear two pairs? Because you have to, you, Shabbos is Lavaz Man and you're only wearing it as a decoration, as a piece of jewelry. And there's enough room on the head for two pieces of jewelry, two tefillin. So that's why you're allowed to wear two. 
we see that there are people that do work too, like Rabbeinu Tam and Rashi at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of an issue. Um, it's a bit of an issue. I saw in the Siddur, uh, uh, some collection from the Chavot Chaim, so when you, you have to you have to have kavana that um, if this is the tefillin, then I shouldn't be yaitz of the other one. If this is the tefillin, <laughs> yeah, it creates a little bit of a complication. I don't know if the people that are doing that uh, are being machmer like that. Maybe there's a, a automatic leniency. Maybe it goes automatic. Um, Okay, honey chadurash. It works out well for the head tefillin because there's space on the head for two pairs of tefillin. The yad mayikla meimar. What about the hand? Is is there space on the hand for two pairs? Kedaravuna. Dama ravuna pam shadam bam and asadav achivlas al reishim asalkin mireishim vakeshim b'zray. Sometimes a person's coming from the field, and he has his tefillin on his head, and he has packages that he's putting on his head, so he doesn't want to put the packages on the tefillin. So he takes the tefillin off and he puts the tefillin on his arm. Now he's wearing two pairs, two, two, not two pairs. He's wearing his head filled on his arm and his arm filled on his arm. In those days, they must have made the knots uh, whenever they wanted. So, but I also say, how do you wrap the head filled on the Over there, he's saying he doesn't want it to get ruined. He doesn't want it to be uh, disrespectful. But does it really mean that there's a place for filling on the arm? There's place on the head and this place on the arm for two tefillin. And that would be the shot here in Ram Gamliel. That there's place for that you that's why you can wear two pairs on, on Shabbos. Okay, we'll leave it over here.